invite you to please rise for the Christmas Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration that was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. She gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were angels living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on peace, and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. Then the angels have left and gone into heaven. The shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. <laughs> what do you think of Christmas Eve? What comes to mind? I think of the glow of candlelight illuminate, illuminating a dark, peaceful space. Nativity scenes. Beloved carols that we get to sing once per year. And backwards. The church in which I was raised had a nativity play one year, and I got to be a shepherd with my brother. Too bad my shepherd's costume was a teal bathrobe, the only bathrobe I had at the time. It was neither historically accurate nor particularly stylish. I might have a picture of it right now for you to see it, as much as I'm embarrassed. Hopefully you can't see it, because it's okay, though. It's not known. I was doing my best with my costume, but I wish I could have had a do-over on being a shepherd. English is a weird language. It tends to have multiple words that mean the same thing. Often one of these words has a Germanic origin, and the other one is a French word, and this is a quirk that really is unique to English. The French words tend to sound sophisticated and pleasant to the ear. The Germanic ones do not. When you're at a restaurant, would you rather have beef or cow? No waiter has ever told you what order of swine coming right up. No, they offer you pork. Pork sounds way more sophisticated and fancy and swine. Beef and pork come from French, but cow, swine, come from German. The French word for what's sitting behind me right here is a manger. The Germanic word, though, is trough. The Christmas story speaks of Jesus being laid in a manger, 
but it's just as accurate to say he was put in the sky. Yeah, right after my Lord Jesus Christ was born, he was placed in a trough. The best spot Mary could find to place our Lord Jesus Christ was the trough, the spot that was otherwise used to swap pigs. Mary was doing the best she could, but her first day with Jesus really hadn't gone to plan. If Jesus was laid down for his first nap, in a place for farm animals to eat. With this most recent COVID surge with Omicron now, this Christmas is not what many of us planned, imagined, or hoped it would be. Maybe your Christmas gathering is going to be smaller than you originally hoped. Maybe you're missing someone you really wish you could have been with this Christmas. Maybe you're worshiping from home Worshiping online today, when you really wish you could physically be in church on this day. But you're just not feeling the Christmas spirit like usual. First Christmas, though, did not go to plan. Lots of adjustments and compromises had to be made on the fly. There was no room for Mary, Joseph, and Jesus in the end, so baby Jesus spent Christmas in a trough. There may be familiar comfort in hearing today that there was no room for them in the end, and she wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger. But I'm almost certain this is not what Mary dreamed the birth of her first child would be like. Mary was doing her best, but Christ's birth surely was not what she dreamed of when she learned she was going to birth God with her. Mangers are not for babies, they're for cows, and they're for pigs. And often they're a mess. <clears throat> Unfortunately, from the very beginning of Jesus' life with us, things don't have to be perfect for Jesus to show up. From the very beginning, Jesus is present in our underwhelming moments. Amidst our disappointments, with people that are doing our best, but kind of hoping for a do-over. From Jesus' very first breath, he was unafraid of being present with us in our messes and in our disappointments. Friends, I hope next Christmas feels a little more normal and like what we're used to. But we don't have to wait for next year for Christ to be present with us. If anything, this year, more than those normal years of years past, perhaps better captures the Christmas story. On Christmas, God enters into our frailties, our frustrations, and our disappointments and chooses to be near you. This is the day God chose to be with you. Nothing can stop that. No mess, no change in plans, no feeling frazzled or disappointed or frustrated stops God from drawing near to you and holding you in God's love. Friends, in spite of all that's happened this year and not happened, God is born anew today. God is with us. Thanks be to God.